Hi there, welcome to IndyCar. It's Gordon Ross again, only 20, what is it, 28th today? I'll just check my diary today. What are we at? We are at, yep, the 28th of January. And are we any further forward with Brexit? Well, not really. The, uh, <coughs> the Tories today are, are actually talking about, or crowing about, to be more uh, accurate, crowing about the idea of going back to vote on Brexit with the backstop removed. In other words, there's a, a, a motion being put forward that the UK will reject the backstop from this agreement that can't be changed and then go back to Europe, the European Union with a majority for Mrs May's deal minus the backstop. And they think that this will show the European Union that this is the only way they will get this deal through. And they expect that the European Union will cave in to Britain's demands to get rid of the backstop, leaving Ireland uh, stuck with the possibility of further troubles. And uh, the UK government doesn't care. They, they don't really care whether there are troubles in Ireland or not. They don't care whether there is terrorism starts up as a result of it. So long as England gets her Brexit, nothing else matters. So does it actually look like that will happen? Well, I think going by the European Union stonewall at the moment, I don't think so. I don't think they're going to give in any ground. They've already said that this is the deal. It's not negotiable. No parts of it can be redacted or taken out or it or added to. It's either this deal or they have to come up with something else completely different. And if the Tories think that removing the backstop is all it will take to uh, convince the European Union to cave in, I think they've got another think coming. Remember that the British government has already... Um, set its red lines. There's not going to be any freedom of movement. People will be checked, passports will be checked, visas will have to be issued. They are going to install way bridges, they're going to have to check every truck that comes in and out of the UK, every port of arrival, every train, every truck, as I say, every car will be checked. It's going to be back to the bad old days of chaotic uh, queuing at customs uh, ports all around the UK. This is what the UK has decided it wants. It wants to be out of everything, uh, but it, it wants a deal. It wants to have some special deal that nobody else is allowed to get uh, if they stay in the European Union, but you can only get when you're out of it. So it makes no sense. The European Union is never going to wear this. They will protect Ireland at all costs. The backstop will remain, and we will go out without any deal at all. I think it's... To be honest with you, the whole <coughs> the whole thing has been a ploy to run the clock down until we get to the point where we have a no-deal Brexit. And that, that is Britain's end point, I think. This is what they're planning for. They're planning for England to come out of um, the European Union, for Scotland to be taken over by England and basically obliterated all, all trace of Scotland and its devolution to be removed and every single resource uh, that Scotland possesses to be utilised for the greater good of the now impoverished England, which has deliberately removed itself from its key European markets. In the meantime, they're going to start a civil war in Ireland, which they don't care about, simply because they cannot uh, seem to make up their minds whether they like Europe or not. They've decided now they, want, they don't like Europe. They don't like all these Johnny foreigners telling them what to do. But the Johnny Foreigners are the very people that they have to sell things to. And they're the very people who are responsible for making over 40% of British food. So where are they going to get the other 40% of their food from if it's not from the European Union? And where are McDonald's going to get the beef for their burgers if not from Irish farmers? And what's that going to do to the price of your, uh, your Big Mac? All of these things are not important to the Tories, they're not important to Middle England Tories, they're not important to the Brexit voters uh, in England. All they care about is themselves, basically. They don't care about Scotland, Wales, or Northern Ireland, or Ireland, or anybody else, as long as they get what they want. In the meantime, uh, Nicola Sturgeon is still in a bind. It's still paralysis in Scotland about when to name the date, but the problem is that we cannot get people to convert to independence unless there is actually a campaign for independence. Unless there is a date and there is something to be voted on, people are not going to get themselves interested in independence if they're not already. So we need a date. We need to galvanise the country. Uh, we don't have any more time left. I think it's inevitable that 
whatever happens with Brexit, it's not going to be good. It's either going to be a hard Brexit. If Mrs May's gamble about removing the backstop were to happen, if it was true, it's still a hard Brexit because the backstop in Northern Ireland removed is going to bring terrorism back to the UK. There's no, there's no doubt about it that the um, IRA dissidents have not gone away. The UVF have not gone away. Nobody from the paramilitaries has disbanded. The weapons have been buried, maybe, but there is still the risk of another uh, war in Ireland, another war of attrition, another war of terrorism and bombing, if Britain repartitions Northern Ireland, which, remember, it was Britain which partitioned Ireland in the first place in 1921. It wasn't the Irish government who put a barrier up, and it wasn't the EU who put the barrier up, it was England. Anyway, enough about history. What do we do about the present? Well, <coughs> at the moment, the Scottish Government has got to try and get its budget through at Holyrood. It's possible that the Greens will object to it, which creates another crisis for the Scottish Government to deal with. Um, if we wait until after Brexit to have a referendum on independence, we're not going to get the Section 30. I mean, that much is almost completely a given. There's absolutely no way that uh, the Tories in charge of Britain are ever going to give Scotland a Section 30 order. And we don't actually need it anyway, remember. We can have a plebiscite election, if we wanted to do that in Holyrood, which would basically give the will of the people uh, a chance to show itself again without having a referendum, without having anything to do with referendums. Simply, uh, a Holyrood general election would do the job. And a vote for the SNP would be a vote for independence. And if the SNP gets more than 50% of the vote in such an election, then independence can be declared. We can adopt the constitution and we can say cheerio to the union with England because that is the only thing you need. A, a lawful vote uh, is what the claim of right asks for. The claim of right says that the Scots can choose who rules them and from where. And to do that, all we need is a lawful vote. And a lawful vote can be in a general election. It doesn't have to be a referendum. But it certainly can't, as has been suggested by a few um, thinkers in the SNP and in other parts of the, the media, it can't be waiting till 2021 for uh, Scotland to vote on its independence. By then, it could be too late. We, we could be completely um, emasculated by British troops on our streets. We don't know what they're going to do. If there's a hard Brexit, martial law declared troops on the streets, normal rules are suspended, normal devolved powers would be suspended or abolished immediately, and we would be in a position where we couldn't hold a raffle, really, never mind a general election or a vote on independence. So we need to act, and in order for people to actually come over to vote for us, to vote for, for independence again, they need to know that there's actually going to be a vote. Otherwise, they're not going to engage with us. They don't care about independence at the moment because there's absolutely no sign of any kind of a referendum or vote on it. So they're not going to be given a chance to think about it. So why should they bother engaging with us at all? We need somebody to say we're going to have a vote. And it just needs to be said what kind of vote it is and when it's going to be. Then we know what we've got a particular time to do it in. And it needs to be done sooner. It needs to be done while Westminster is in chaos because otherwise they will make another one of their gigantic efforts with their tame media um, and they, they command the high ground. They always have. The British government owns the media, uh, all of the media, not social media. All we've got is ourselves, social media and marching on the streets. What they've got is the apparatus for disseminating the lies they want to tell the public and they've been doing it for decades. For over a hundred years they've been been papping out this stuff. We need to act and we need a date. If we don't get a date soon, nobody is going to listen to us for much longer. I know that everybody is pressing their club for a date, but until there is one, we can't start converting other people to the cause because they at the moment are not um, motivated to think about it. All they're thinking about is what's happening with Brexit and what's happening tomorrow with their job and you know how they're going to pay their bills. At the moment, it seems disconnected to them. 
they don't see the point in talking about independence with somebody like me or you because there is no chance of it happening at the moment. And until there is a date and until there is something to aim at that forces them to get off their sofas and switch the television off and start actually thinking and finding things out, they're not going to do it. They may well come over to our side, but they can't come over to our side unless they know that there is going to be a vote and they will have to make their minds up. Some people have to be led to this. Remember, not everybody comes to it voluntarily. Some people have to be pushed towards making a vote because they don't like to dis they don't like to engage in politics. It's not their thing. You hear people say, Oh, I don't do politics, I'm not really interested in that. They're all the same anyway, and we never get what we vote for, blah 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 blah. This time we're not voting for politicians. We're voting to get rid of the corrupt politicians that are ruling us at the moment and to elect our own. But we're not going to convert anybody until we have a date. And Nicola needs to stop prevaricating because at the moment she's giving more ammunition to the media and she is allowing the energy that's in the movement at the moment to dissipate. There's a kind of entropy going on at the moment. We're constantly trying to feed the morale of the people in the movement, but we have no idea what's going to happen, and we cannot start a campaign until somebody says there is going to be a vote, and that it's going to happen, you know, in X number of weeks. We need that time scale. Uh, if we don't have it, then none of the polls are going to move. Nicola keeps saying, you know, that they're, they're waiting for some sign in the polls that the Scots are ready for independence. But the Scots aren't going to be ready for independence until they know that they can vote on it. Nobody is going to move in the polls just now. And remember, the polls are conducted by British companies for the British press, controlled by the British state. And those polls are always, always look as if independence is balanced 50-50 because it suits the media and it suits the British government to make it seem that way. But we know that 69% of people want an independence referendum. Now why would nearly 70% of Scots say they want an independence referendum if they don't want independence? If they didn't want independence they would say no we don't want a referendum, we're happy with everything the way it is. We've got nearly 70% of the people behind us and it's about time we named the date and Stuck it to them because we've been sitting on the fence far too long. What the hell does it matter what Britain does with Brexit? It's all going to be bad. None of it's going to be good for Scotland, no matter what kind of Brexit it is. It's going to happen. Nobody's talking about calling it off. They're even talking about making the Brexit deal worse, for goodness sake, and then trying to force the EU to back down. It's not going to happen. In 60 days' time, we're out of the EU. But actually, in less time than that, in something like, what, uh, 48 days' time, the EU will have passed the point of no return where it cannot stop the process of booting us out of the EU because at that point, they won't be able to ratify the deal if it doesn't go ahead. So we've got until about the 14th of March and then after that, we are Brexiting, ready or not. And that's, that's the basic truth of the matter. Ready or not, we're out of the EU and we can't stop it after the 14th. It's not the 29th that we worry about. It's the 14th because the EU has said that after that point, they cannot change things. They cannot stop the clock at that point. It's going to happen. Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting and go and do some work now. But... Bear in mind that we need a date. We really, really need to get it now. Uh, I don't know how many more ways we can say it to Nicola. And uh, she kept saying to us, Scotland must tell us when they want uh, their independence. Well, we're telling you now. Now is the time. Let's do it. And while we've got nearly 70% of Scotland wanting an independence referendum, how big a majority do you need? 70%. That's the highest majority we've ever had for anything to do with independence. Nearly 70% of Scots are wanting an independence referendum. Read it in black and white, it was there in the survey results. Let's get on with it, let's stop messing around and let's stop waiting for England to do things. We're always waiting for the UK to make the first move. And then of course they make the first move and it flanks us. 
time that we took control of our destiny, why are we letting other people set the time frame for this? We can't let England set the time frame. Whoever acts first controls the outcome of the results, or with word to that effect. In a situation like this where there is deadlock and confusion all around you, the person who has a plan and acts first controls the outcome of the situation. And it's always been Britain that's acted first, and we've always suffered the consequences of the resulting situations. When are we going to learn that we're not going to get out of an abusive relationship by allowing ourselves to be continually smacked down by somebody else? That's, that's the situation we're in. Let's stop letting ourselves get beaten down. Stop waiting <coughs> for the abusive partner to say sorry and really it's okay, it's going to be all right. We don't need to do that anymore. 70% nearly of Scots are ready for a referendum. Let's just have it. We don't need permission from London. We don't need a Section 30 order to have an advisory referendum. And that advisory referendum, incidentally, will stand in Scots law. And in Scots law, that means that the Scottish Government can then legislate to adopt the Constitution and start the process of becoming independent. And sod England. They, they've had their day. They're getting their wish in Brexit. We are not going that road. See you later.